Uh, hello everyone. Today's date is uh, June 4th and this is a video presentation about my experience in the coronavirus. Um, my name is Henry Keller. I'm from Madison, Connecticut. Uh, I'm currently 16 years old and I'm a sophomore at Fairfield Prep. Um, at Prep I do uh, hockey and lacrosse and I am also a part of the debate team and outside of Prep I do fall hockey and summer lacrosse as, and I also caddy in the summer as a job. Um, so speaking a little bit about my experience in the coronavirus, um, I first really heard about the coronavirus, um, it was like late February, mid to late February, I remember I was going home from hockey practice one day, um, I mean my parents were discussing it because it was such a big deal in uh, China, but I was really, I didn't really think it would affect me much because I, I kind of pictured it being like, um, I guess I pictured it being like kind of like the Ebola virus, where it was a really big deal in Africa, but it didn't really touch the United States very much. Um, but other than that, um, it obviously did affect us, um, and it really affected our hockey season, because I remember being in class one day and getting an email from our coach saying that our postseason hockey was going to be canceled, and that was really a bummer because we had been working so hard as a team. Uh, the whole season and just to have that end so suddenly was a was a really big deal for us. Um, um, a little bit more about how I've been affected by the coronavirus. Um, I really I haven't really known anyone who's been affected personally. Like I don't really have any close family members who have contracted the disease. Um, but it it really has put a lot of stress on me. I guess um, more so from being kind of blocked in the house a lot with the same people every day never really gone through that before. I'm usually, I'm used to like going to school and um, kind of getting away from the family a little bit and then coming home and seeing them again. But this time, obviously we're all locked in together. So that's, that's been a, putting a lot of stress on me and I, I definitely my family. But um, speaking more about the family, I think that although it is a lot of stress, we've been working through it together. And I think that um, in, in doing so, we've really come together more as a family and um, because we really need to, in this time, kind of stick together because there's not a lot of th people we can talk to and not a lot of um, outside help we can get. So we kind of really rely on each other more during this time. Um, but in terms of kind of my extended family, like I said, I've been uh, self-isolating with um, just my direct family. So, but my cousins, usually I can see them a little bit more often because they um, come over sometimes for like an outdoor like fire pit or something barbecue uh, with the nice warmer weather. <clears throat> um, but my other family, like my grandparents, who we really are trying to stay away from, and my uh, other extended family that lives kind of farther away, um, we normally just stay in touch using um, Zoom, um, which is not really a super effective way. Um, and that's kind of what I also want to want to talk about a little bit is the new kind of uh, environment um, and how big of a role that a virtual socializing has played in this coronavirus. Um, I think it's it's really odd because I don't I, I know that I've grown up with technology my entire life, but I've never really depended on technology this much um, to kind of just um, <clears throat> control my daily lives in a way. So that's been weird. Um, and also the Zoom I find I think if I want to talk about this a little bit more, is, is, is kind of a, a not really super effective way, like I said before, because, you know, there's a problem with internet, and, and it doesn't really have that, although you can see the other person's face, you don't really have that, like, person-to-person -person connection that you can have when you're talking to someone um, in person, but it's a good way to keep up with the family, like, you can have a lot of people on at once, so that, that's what we've been really doing to keep up with our family and stay connected. Um, so... A little bit more about the experience at home for me, something that I've kind of transitioned into, maybe something a little bit unexpected was by kind of, um, I've learned to really like to read a little bit more during this coronavirus. Um, during the school year, it's kind of hard to um, kind of enjoy reading because you have a lot of uh, reading assignments like textbook assignments, which are pretty lengthy sometimes, and you have a lot of English assignments to read and books that, that are assigned to you. So you, I, don't, I never really found time to kind of like pick a book that I like and pick a book that I can really enjoy and uh, kind of free read per se. Um, but I've really enjoyed that during the coronavirus. So I think I've, I've had a lot more time on my hands and that's something that's definitely unexpected for me because I've never really done that before. Um, so I've kind of picking up, uh, taken up like uh, pleasure reading. I've never done it before. 
Um, like right now, I'm reading uh, Malcolm Gladwell's Outsiders, uh, Outliers, sorry, um, which is a very good book. I definitely recommend it. Um, but moving forward, um, kind of the daily life, daily routine. It, it's it can, it's a little boring, I would say, because um, it's very robotic. Like I get up every day at the same time. I do the same classes every day. I get up usually, yeah. So I usually get up around eight thirty, just just in time for a class. Um, and on some days my class will end at eleven. My classes end at eleven thirty. On other days it's two thirty. Um, but as soon as class ends, I try to kind of change out of my uh, school clothes. You know, um, put on my shorts, t-shirt, and and try to lift and work out as much as I can. I have this nice little like. Um, body weight exercises with a, with some dumbbells and things because we don't really have that uh, many uh, weights to utilize downstairs. Um, but after I do that, I, I, do, I do some stairs in the house for running and exercise, cardio exercises, and then I go outside and practice my lacrosse shot um, as much as I can, do some uh, lacrosse running and uh, agility exercises. Um, and then I get back in the house, I take a shower, I usually start my homework around, I'd say like, um, depending on the day, maybe like three, four, four thirty. Um, and then I take a little bit of break from my homework. I play some Xbox with my friends, which is also a great way that I've been staying connected with my friends is through Xbox. Um, but other than that, when that's over, I usually just eat dinner around seven thirty with my family, uh, which is also a great time to kind of like reconnect with the family. If we've been kind of downstairs or upstairs or different parts of the house doing our own things all day. Um, kind of having those nice dinner conversations is really good for our family connection. Um, and then after that, I uh, go upstairs, finish up my homework, maybe watch a show or something and go to sleep. So it's not really super interesting. Um, but that's kind of what I think most people's daily lives is like during coronavirus. It's just kind of doing things every day that you know you have to get done and you know that you have to do to like kind of better yourself um, because there's not really much to do in this time. Um, in terms of, um, so I guess I want to end really with kind of a message for all the Fairfield Prep students and things like that during, from in the future and now, um, from my time in coronavirus, I think that it's really important that you just enjoy um, everything you that prep has to offer because this year, like I really wish that I could live out my last kind of half of the year of sophomore year. Um, I really think that I maybe have taken advantage and um, kind of not really understood how fun and how important prep is to my life and I think to a lot of people's lives. And I haven't really realized it until I couldn't go to prep and I couldn't do those things that I really enjoy every day. Um, so my, my message is definitely to um, uh, enjoy every single bit of Fairfield Prep and what Fairfield Prep has to offer. Um, and finally, um, I guess the last topic I really want to talk about is um, kind of the pol political side of this, the news, the um, leadership. Um, so every night I try to watch, uh, as much as I can, I try to watch the PBS NewsHour. I really find that that's a, um, a great way to keep up with like um, more fact-based journalism instead of a lot of more political commentary that you see on Fox and CNN and things like that. Um, so I, I really think they've been doing a great job keeping up with just the facts of the coronavirus and it's a great way to keep updated. Um, and through those updates, I really learned a lot about how the um, leadership in our country is handling this coronavirus. And I think it's, I think it, in the in the beginning, it was definitely it was definitely abysmal. I, I was really disappointed in the way that um, our president and that administration was kind of dismissing the coronavirus, um, not being prepared, not providing the right aid for research uh, early on, not really setting out a plan until it was too late, and until that we kind of went into this. Um, kind of deep lockdown, unlike other countries like South Korea, who had invested in testing um, and so that they could socially isolate that way so and to let other people go out their daily lives. So you really find that, I guess my closing message in this is that uh, how important leadership is in these times and how important strong, um, coordinated leadership is. Um, and I think, I think in the state level, I think that um, Ned Lamont has done a pretty good job with that. Um, I think it, it probably could have been better, but I think that he's really taken the time to kind of lay out for the people uh, specific plans. Um, and I think that that is probably a, a good example of leadership. Um, so that's all I have for you guys today. Um, um, I know it's not super interesting considering um, how boring this, like living out our lives is today. 
Um, but it's very interesting in what's going on in the world, and I hope that um, our generation can be an example for future generations who have to deal with something similar. So, thank you.